and uh, this is my video blogging setup. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm using the golden eye, the latest golden eye here for live ch live chat. I can see live RFC chat, and it's live streaming the video, so everybody can see what I see the whole day. It's going through the tablet onto the LTE network of Verizon. So. Let's go over there to the GoldenEye stand and let's ask them how the GoldenEye is working, how the, what's the latest news with GoldenEye. So I'm, I'm all set up here at the, at the Copin booth and uh, the, my setup is live streaming on the Hangout, you can see through the Verizon LTE. This is uh, on air, uh, Hangout on air, it's broadcasting from my head so you can actually see the cameraman here. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to ask. Jeff Jacobson here, and I'm gonna actually switch over to my camera, so we're gonna stop this one uh, as soon as, not yet, not yet, but I'm gonna start it, and I'm gonna start it, uh, so as soon as I start, you can stop yours, okay? Mm -hmm. right. So we here is uh, Jeff Jacobson here, and um, at the Verizon booth? Yes. CS 2013. Yes. So, what's your role at the uh, Copin? I'm the senior advisor to the CEO, and I'm the program manager for GoldenEye. So are you the inventor of MicroDisplay? I don't, wouldn't say I'm the inventor. I was one of the first people to perceive there was a need for a small display, something that could be magnified near the eye. And back in 1990, I pursued the U.S. government to be able to obtain the funding to pursue such research. Such time, in such time, we have become the leading supplier to the U.S. military. So is, uh, is it still 30 million screens, or is it more now? Uh, there's more now. I don't know exactly what the number is. So what is a... Uh, this is the 3.8. 3.8. It's uh, a magnesium copper titanium alloy with a Lexan shell. Uh, Lexan's basically a polycarbonate material. Uh, it was designed to be exceptionally light, to be very robust. This particular version that I'm wearing is more of a SWAT type uh, configuration and that it's a nitride passivated uh, black housing which makes it very durable but normally on my black housing I have a, a, a black battery case and the black battery case would have velcro on it and so if I'm coming in and looking for something I have various different types of light mechanisms that just Velcro right on so that I can be completely hands-free. Then if I want to be able to pull it off, I can. If I'm a policeman going into a bar at night, uh, that's what you might see in your face when he comes in to talk to you. So it disorients people, actually helps the policeman subdue the situation. So uh, this is a new version. Can you explain what went into designing this? Well, you want it to be as light as possible. For example, not everybody wants to wear this as a headset. So if you move these down and unlock them, you can pull them off. Now you can put clips on so that it will clip directly onto a ball cap. So when I go to put this on, I may have it configured like this. When I put my hat on, it's just there. These are no longer necessary. It's now part of my cap. On the other hand, if I'm a person that wears a hard hat or a fireman, uh, I've already got a hat on. I really don't want something else on my head. So there are different clips that fit right here that allow me to be able to jack it right into the fittings on either side of the hard hat or fireman's helmet. Now it just becomes part of my helmet. Uh, it's there. I can use it. I'll f fashion my chin strap and I'm ready to go to work. So what is the materials? Well, for example, this material here is a polycarbonate called Lexan, made by General Electric. Uh, typically people find it in the headlight covers of their cars or they find it in the bumpers. It's, it's extremely durable and light. Uh, the boom structure here and much of the metallization that's in this device is, as I had said earlier, a magnesium copper titanium alloy. It's very robust, uh, very stable, even under various different temperatures. Um, where you've got radios, uh, you have to have antennas. Right now in the front we have a quad quadruplex antenna. That gives us the ability to handle Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at 2.45 gigahertz. It also allows us to handle Wi-Fi at 5 to 5.8 gigahertz. Plus, we have the same type of antenna architecture back here. Uh, it's possible to get these devices not just with a uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but to also be able to get these devices with LTE. 
So now you've got full cellular capability, a full suite of Wi-Fi, and a full complement of Bluetooth radios, of which you can use one or more at any one time. So it's flexible, right? Yes, well it's designed where you have a, a basic uh, adjustment in the back that compensates for the width uh, and length of people's heads. It has some compression hinges which are designed to uh, shape around the configuration of your head, even if it's a little bit off one way or another. And it forms a nice tight bond to your head. It's very conformal, but it's not restrictive. There's no undue pressure. And how heavy is this? In its lightest configuration, it's about four and a half ounces. In this current configuration, this is about six and a half ounces. Uh, if I add uh, flashlights and illuminators to it, if I add the IR camera, which you'll see over here, uh, it gets up to about eight ounces. Now this is a uh, 640 by 480, 17 micron pixel IR camera. It provides me with both night vision as well as thermal vision. It operates in roughly the eight micron to 13 and a half micron frequency range. Can you show how the battery comes off? Sure, there's a little switch right here. You can hot swap batteries. So if you are running low on energy, you can pop that battery off and battery pop another battery back on. pretty long, no? Yes, uh, these batteries come right now in 3,000 milliamp hour uh, capacities. Uh, they uh, are uh, going to become available in up to uh, 4,000 milliamp hour capacities. Yeah. So, uh, there you go. So there's only very few prototypes today. Uh, <clears throat> Well, now that, now that we have uh, uh, put together a relationship with Verizon, we're in the process of building uh, thousands of these devices to bring to market. Uh, these devices as a developer and evaluation kit should become available in April. You should be able to get them through any of your uh, Verizon resources. And, uh, of course, many people know who we, we are. I'd be happy to, if anyone wants to contact me, to provide additional information and help them get in contact with the people that can provide them. So here at CS, uh, you're getting lots, lots of, lots of uh, interest. Yes, you might say we've got a lot of interest. It really doesn't matter what people do. The majority of people that go to work every day require one or both of their hands free. Even people that are hobbyists that, uh, for example, want to work on their motorcycles or their snowmobiles, who want to be able to pull down technical documentation or look at YouTube videos which might be available on how to perform a function like installing a new, a new radio system in their car can do that and they can start and stop the videos real time. They can pull up all the documentation. They can even go onto the manufacturer's website and pull down information that might be new and interesting from the manufacturer's website. And they can do that with their hands with gloves on or with grease on their fingers and they don't have to touch it. And uh, what could be the price? These essentially in the basic system are not going to cost any more than uh, roughly a, a high-end smartphone. So it doesn't have to be super expensive? No, it doesn't have to be super expensive. It, of course it depends on the quantities that are going to be manufactured. But well, as the quantities go up, the ability to make things less expensive uh, becomes more possible, more feasible. And, and uh, it's just full of uh, smart detail in the design. Well, for example, one. this is a 14 megapixel uh, normal ambient light or near IR camera. The reason that it contracts back in is that in an industrial setting, it now becomes part of the housing and it's not hanging out there. But when you move it out, now you can pivot it all around. Nice. And uh, if you want to switch it to your right, right eye, you... Well, basically, if you want to switch it over to the other eye, you can take, in, this, in a headset configuration, take this off, swing it down like this, bring this back up, put your, what we call these stabilizers on. They don't now actually you, hold the device, right? They just stabilize. No, they actually just acts as a, a mild stabilization should you get involved in very aggressive activities like running or jumping or moving very quickly and so now you've just reconfigured it and the software adapts automatically and that's it yep so uh this omap 4 this is an omap 4 4470 uh, we uh the the devices we're putting out are 4470 uh twin core arms uh full dsp uh hardware accelerators for both 3g graphical information as well as uh for high speed video I think congratulations again, uh, best of CES. Thank you very much.
what are you doing here? There we go. What did you just do? There we go. All righty. I just rebooted the software. Thank you. <coughs> so, so, uh, All righty. Who are you? Who am I? My name is Chris Parkinson from Copin Corporation. I'm showing you the GoldenEye headset. This is the latest generation that we're introducing at CES this year. This is a fully featured headset computer. I think we've talked about this in the past. Now I'm going to show you how we might apply this to firefighting. So I wear this, and as, as I don this, I am Firefighter 1 in our example. I have a forward-facing camera. I'm able to capture the video ahead of me and stream it over Wi-Fi to the control center behind me. So if you see up here, we have my live video feed. The control center can also track me through GPS, show me on the map, and it also shows me the other four firefighters in my group. <coughs> we can bring these guys up, and we can find out what's this guy seeing in his camera, and also his biometric information, pulse, respiration rate, and we can even track his head orientation. We have the ability to determine whether he's standing upright or even lying face down, in which case he might be in trouble and need some help. Now, this two-way video feed, enabled by Verizon's LTE, is great for me connecting to the command center. But there's occasion when I need to talk to my other firefighting friends, so I can actually command their video stream to come right into my device. Firefighter 2. So what we see now is that on my screen, I get to see Firefighter 2's live video, his biometric information, and now I can communicate with him directly. So are you seeing what we see behind you? Yes, we're seeing exactly the this same thing. This is in thing. the headset? Correct. And now I can actually go back to my command center and say, hey, I need some help. Call for help. So we see now the command center, we get the message that Firefighter 1 is requiring some assistance. So I can see what's going on, bring his information up, and say, hey, buddy, what's wrong with you? He says, well, I need a map. I'm stuck in a bur burning building. How do I get out? So we can quickly scribble a map on a bit of paper and send it over to him for visual display, allowing him to escape. But now the next problem is he's now confronted with smoke. He can't see a thing. So at this point, he switches on his thermal camera, which is also built into the headset. And the view he will get then is something like this. So he can't, remember, he cannot see anything because it's pitch black. But when he looks down into his display, he now gets a full thermal view and is able to navigate through the building and maybe even find an unconscious child and pick him up and bring him to safety. And this is, uh, where is the camera right now? The infrared camera right now is actually up here for this view. Yeah. But that can be right it's, there. On the it's side. located on the side, typically. All right. Yes. So what kind of other demos do you have here? That's the standard demo that we're showing off here today. Firefighter also, demo. The Firefighter demo. We're also showing other software, generic software, that uh, is more applicable to social networking and maybe a consumer device that may follow in the years to come. So you, uh, you would think about this for firefighters, for police? Or? Yes, certainly. We have uh, many si similar situations to this. For example, paramedics might wear this. If you have a patient on the floor here that needs attention, donning this headset and then attending to the patient means that the live high definition video stream can be sent to ER, the emergency room can be looking at this and then talking me through the process of how to prepare the patient for transport and they are now also preparing for his receipt into the ER room. So how hard is it to do all this? Can we meet your, your software team? Sure, we've got a software team in the UK, uh, I'll meet some of them. They're, they're software engineers so they may not be yeah. too uh, friendly. In fact. Gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourself to the camera now? I told you, they're a software team, they don't have social graces, but here they are. These are the software team from the UK, who are putting together a lot of the really great software to power GoldenEye. So are you having fun here in Las Vegas? Uh, great, yeah. Yeah. Are you like programming the whole night? <laughs> First couple of days. So, so how hard is it to add an application to your system? How can you do it? The microphone is over here. extremely easy to work with. But let me let me come talk to my chest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we, we've created a, a platform which makes it very easy to create applications on GoldenEye. So it's actually much easier than it might appear. So is it like an SDK? Yes, there's an SDK with a whole family of controls specialised to GoldenEye for voice control and head tracker control. 
uh, it's as simple as putting those controls together in the form that you want and you've got an application. So can you talk about the platform? Today is Windows CE, can it also be Android? I think uh, that's wide open. I think we're certainly looking at Android. Um, obviously that's the, the operating system of choice for lots of platforms these days. And so we will be stupid to ignore that. All right. Well, actually, uh, straight from the Copenhagen office, I can tell you that we actually have decided to go Android. And in the next two months, we'll be switching over from Windows to a full Android ice cream sandwich operating system, which actually is, uh, it makes it wide open for the millions of developers out there to start writing really exciting augmented reality applications with this device. That's just going to be so awesome. And uh, this is a future version. Uh, they're teasing with it up there. They told me it's, it's actually a fully working hardware. I mean, it could work. The It's a mock-up, but it's, uh, it is for real. And it's even lighter. That's coming. Peut-être on apprend à se connaître. Je me révèle petit à petit. Et parfois ce n'est pas à mon, à mon avantage, certes. Mais j'aime trop dans un sens sortir ou avoir ma propre vie, ma propre indépendance.